guys, it's Andy here and we're back looking at decks in Modern. This is a five color Slither deck that I've put together for you guys. Uh, I was kind of uh, requested to do this deck tech by Trevor Bim. Uh, he posted on one of the Deck Doctor videos that I did recently asking if I could do a Deck Doctor for Modern Slithers. But Deck Doctor is specifically to fix pe other people's decks. So I've just said that I'll do a uh, Modern Deck tech for this one. So this is the deck that I put together. Uh, Slithers is something that I've played ever since I started playing Magic uh, that I started playing around uh, Onslaught and they were around just before them with Tempest and all that so Slithers is something that I absolutely love uh, the the type's insanely cool they've got a whole lot of synergy or that they, the whole creature type is just synergy but uh, being able to make them fairly competitive in a modern setting uh, isn't exactly the easiest thing but we do have some key cards that can make it work uh, pretty freaking well and I've actually been getting quite a lot of wins with this through playtesting uh, the deck's a hell of a lot of fun, and I'm just going to touch on the main board here, talk about the sideboard interactions between, and hopefully you guys enjoy the video. So to start off the lineup, we're running four copies of Beast Whisperer. And this guy's not a slither, but he does help us draw into more slithers. So he's for four, two, and two green. It's a two, three elf druid, with whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. Uh, there is an absolute shitload of creatures in this deck, all but four of them being slith- all but- all eight of them being slithers. We're also running four copies of Phantasmal Image, which is for two, one, and a blue. It's a zero, zero illusion. You may have Phantasmal Image enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it's an illusion in addition to its other types, and it gains when this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability, sacrifice it. Being able to come in as a copy of any of one of our Slithers, insanely good. Uh, all of them have Anthem effects, being all Slithers have, but the Anthem effects that are giving plus one to all of our creatures, it's just pseudo four, four more copies of that so we've got potentially 12 creatures in the deck that give our slithers plus one plus one so similar to how a modern merfolk deck would work they're just playing anthem after anthem after anthem we're doing that with slithers and we're also adding a bit of evasion whereas in the uh, merfolk deck you'd be adding island walk so the anthems come in the form of four copies of sinew slither which is for two one and a white it's a one one slither with all slithers get plus one plus one Four, uh, four copies of Predatory Slither, which is for two. For one and a green, it's a 1-1 one, one Slither with Slithers you control get plus one plus one. Four copies of Gale Rider Slither. So this is the evasion. For one, it's a 1-1 one, one Slither with Slither creatures you control have flying. The shared evasion on this card is absolutely insane. Being able to play all of these dirt cheap Slithers, all of them making all the other ones bigger, throw this down, now they're all flying, going straight over the top of everybody, uh, hitting, the, hitting their Planeswalkers, hitting their face. More often than not, they're swinging in as 4 4 five fives, maybe even bigger. Uh, it, this deck very quickly gets out of control. Uh, one of the key pieces that helps that is the four copies of uh, Collected Company. So Collected Company is for four, three, and a green. It's at instant speed, and you look at the top six cards of your library, and you can put up to two creature cards with converter mana cost three or less from among them onto the battlefield, and put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. I've very deliberately gone for the low curve slithers in Magic so that we can hit as many things as possible with Collected Company. None of the slithers that we have in the main deck or in the sideboard cost more than three, so we're always going to hit them with Collected. Uh, we're going to hit Phantasmals off Collected, but the ability to seemingly pull slithers out of our deck out of nowhere and on their end step put down another couple of Anthem creatures and then swing in for even bigger. Collected Company is definitely something worth having in the deck. One of the big things that enables it is the two copies of Firewake Slither which is for three, one, a red, and a green. It's a 1-1 slither with all slithers have haste, and pay one, sacrifice this slither, target slither gets plus two, plus two, until end of turn. So if we've got a heap of slithers going in, and they decide to block a couple of them, and that damage isn't getting through, uh, whether or not it's anthem slithers or whatever else, uh, we can sacrifice the ones that are getting blocked that aren't like proper anthems, uh, sacrifice the ones that aren't important to buff up the ones that are getting through, getting more damage in, but the haste is really relevant because we are running so many ways to generate mana and being able to collect a company, get them out of the deck, straight onto the battlefield, Firewake giving them haste, they can swing in the turn they come in. Just absolute smashing hitting power coming out of that. Uh, the extra mana that we're getting is coming in the form of four copies of Gem Hide Slither and four copies of Mana Weft Slither. Now they essentially do the same thing, giving your Slithers the ability to tap for any one color mana. Uh, this can make all of our slithers turn into ramp pieces, being able to play more slithers off the top. And if we've got the fire wake out, uh, it allows us to play a slither and then immediately tap it for more mana. And if we've got this guy out, we can tap a slither to generate mana, 
play another slither draw another card probably a slither play that as well tap and you get the cycle uh, the other way we have to cheat them out is four copies of aether vial which is for one it's an artifact sits on the battlefield at the beginning of your upkeep you may put a charge counter on aether vial and then you have tap you may put a creature card with phenomenal cost equal to the number of charge counters on aether vial from your hand into play this is another essential card that's coming out of uh the same logic of the merfolk decks being able to play slithers in our opponent's turns being able to play them at instant speed uh getting around casting because we're just putting it onto the battlefield uh it's great against control just being able to cheat them onto the battlefield overall great piece of what the deck's trying to do uh we have a little bit of removal in the form of path to exile which is for one uh at instant speed you remove target creature from the game its controller may search its library for a basic land card put that card onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle their library just touching on the land base here we have a four of each of unclaimed territory and as a battlefield you choose creature type and it's got tap for colorless or tap for any one mana but spend this mana only to cast creatures of the chosen type uh four of horizon canopy tap pay one life add green or white team mana pool pay one tap sack it to draw a card four copies of slither hive which has tap add one or tap add one mana of any color spend this mana only to cast a slither spell or five tap put a one one colorless slither creature token onto the battlefield activate this ability only if you control a slither so this gives us another outlet for us to spend our um slither generated mana on so on our opponent's end step we can tap our slithers generate mana tap this create another slither and just kind of get get a little bit of an engine going just creating more and more tokens every turn four copies of cavern of souls which is very similar to the unclaimed territory uh when it comes in you choose a creature type it's got tap add colorless and then it's got tap add one mana of any color again spend this mana only to cast creature spells of the chosen type but cavern of souls is really really good in the control matchups because it's got tacked onto the end of it and that spell can't be countered so insanely good piece uh playing against control just every time you play a slither you want to generate the mana out of this so that it's always going to hit the board seemingly turning all of their counter spells into dead cards it's just a really really good card uh this deck by far is not budget uh just solely by the uh lands that are in the deck uh the cavern of souls uh like a hundred dollar card the uh horizon canopies are uh, pretty much the same last time i checked and yeah so definitely not budget just because of the land base uh the rest of it's you'd pick up pretty cheap uh except, sorry the aether vials themselves are fairly expensive and i think collected companies are 20 dollars each but yeah as far as a, a modern deck goes if you spend probably about the same amount of money, you probably get a better deck, but this is a whole lot of fun. Two copies of Razor Verge Thicket, which enters battlefield tapped unless you control two or fewer other lands, tapped for green or white, and a single copy of Temple Garden, which enters battlefield tapped unless you pay to your life, and it's tapped for green or white. It's a Forest Plains. You would think with all of the comes in, choose a creature type to generate the mana would be an issue, but by the time you've already got one out, uh, the time you hit a second or a third one of these, a lot of the time you'll be naming the illusions or the elf just so that you can generate that extra green or the extra blue mana. Uh, but the mana fixing from the mana weft or the gem hide is more often than not insanely good. They do kind of paint, paint a little bit of a target on the head, but there is eight of them. And then we do have the other ways to cheat out creatures anyway. So uh, the mana base, although kind of quirky, works really, really well. Uh, solely because of the mana generating slithers. Going on to the sideboard here, this is where we introduce the fifth color in the two copies of Siphon Slither. Uh, it's for three, two, and a black. It's a two-two slither with slither creatures you control have lifelink. Just great in the aggro matchups. Gives all of our super hard hitting uh, slithers lifelink. A lot of the times can gain us more life than they can deal. Uh, again, it's a three cost card, so we can cheat it off the top of the deck with Collect Company. Uh, two copies of shadow slither which is for three two and a blue it's a one one slither with all slithers have shadow and this is a bit of a double-edged sword because they can't block us but we can't block them unless they have shadow either so again double-edged sword but this coming off the top of the deck through collected again it's a three cost if this comes off the top of the deck through collected company and we can just swing in unblockable for lethal that's what it's in there for it's just that the another surprise way to get damage through uh a little bit more for the controlling matchups we're running two copies of opaline slither which is for three one a white and a blue it's a two two slither with all slithers have whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell and opponent controls you may draw a card so whenever they're trying to hit us with removal whenever they're trying to hit us with anything uh drawing cards off it uh, just another slither based tool that's in, in the uh, sideboard there for the control matchups 
Uh, another really good one is the three copies of Diffusion Slither, which is for two, one, and a blue. It's a 1-1 Slither with Slither creature you control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls. Counter that spell unless its controller pays two. We have multiple of these out. A lot of the times they just haven't got the mana to try and do whatever the hell they want to do to our stuff. Making Fatal Push is a three cost, making activated abilities cost two more or four more or six more, depending on how many of these guys we got out. A little bit of a tax on anything they're trying to do to us. More often than not can give us the advantage that we need, uh, especially against control. Just a really, really good card. Uh, three copies of Leyline of Sanctity. It uh, gives us that hexproof against decks like Jund and other ones that are running a lot of hand hate because we want to we don't ha want to have our creatures hitting the board as often as possible. And if they can just select whatever they want out of our hand and just get rid of it early, uh, that can be a really big problem for us. So Leyline is a definite way to fix that. And it's also really good in uh, matchups like Burn. So Leyline of Sanctity is for four, uh, two, and two white. It's an enchantment. Uh, if Leyline of Sanctity is in your opening hand, it can begin on the battlefield. And it just gives you hexproof, so you can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control. Really, really good card. I was running other slithers in in this sideboard here, just stuff that like gave you a bit of recursion or some exile. But I figured that something a little bit more on the utility side was was uh, necessary. So this is why we have the the lane alone in the sideboard here. One of the really cool tools we're running in the sideboard here that is also a slither, and is surprisingly more relevant than you would think, is the harmonic slither in a three of. So Harmonic Slither is for three, one, a green, and a white. It's a 1-1 Slither with all Slithers have. When this creature comes into play, destroy target artifact or enchantment. So if we're up against Mono Red Prison or Lantern Control or Affinity or anything trying to abuse the uh, Wordless Reclamation or it, like any of those enchantment-based decks, artifacts, enchantments, this in a three of just turns all of our Slithers into more removal and it's when it comes into play trigger, it's not on cast. So we can play Collected Company, get two more Slithers off Collected Company, and kill two more things, potentially. If this can hit the board and stay there for a little while, even just a little while, the amount of value that we can get out of it is insane. And that finishes the sideboard and the main board. That is five color Slithers in Modern. And hopefully you guys can uh, test this one out and let me know what you think. Uh, I've been playtesting it quite a bit on the uh, European server on Xmage, and it's been putting up a lot of Ws. It's surprisingly fun. Uh, it's a bit more of a toolboxy kind of build, but the amount of anthems in the deck is probably something that I, I like the most. Uh, it's definitely got some versatility to it, surprisingly. This one was a whole lot of fun to put together. If you guys want to see more stuff like this, uh, like challenging me to make a deck out of something that might be an idea that you don't know what to do with or whatever else, just let me know in the comments. And yeah, thanks guys. Thanks for watching guys. As always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to see new videos as they were released. If you like what I do and you want to support the channel, you can throw me a dollar on my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash sandersquest. And I will see you guys in the next video. Keep questing guys.